Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bold. Yellow Aki. I'm Hey guys, how's it going? We're gonna be reviewing some enclosures today, finally. This was a very highly requested one. I have my Skinny Pop popcorn ready for some nice enclosure pictures. Skinny, of course, because we all know I need it. Anyway, let's hop into it and let's look at all these enclosures. There's around 13 of them, so I'm probably gonna spend a minute each. First, we have an enclosure from Lizard Boy 04. I believe it is a custom built juvenile retegu enclosure. This is definitely good enough for an adult. I mean, it's four by five by eight and it looks really well designed. It actually looks like it's underneath a bed. So that's really interesting to me. I see this big trend of enclosures being put under beds. So that's really cool. Anyway, for the actual enclosure, I really like the design. I actually want to know what that plant is in the middle there, because I want to plant my tegu enclosure eventually, and I hear it could be a pain in the booty. So I would love to know what that is. There's plenty of diversity in there. I really like that. Different rocks, different hides. I would really like to know the size of the tegu, but overall, this is a fantastically designed enclosure. There looks like there's nothing missed. I got to give a 10 out of 10. Next, we have Ludwig 007, a custom baby Russian tortoise enclosure. I like it. It's pretty simplistic. I do think it's better for a Russian tortoise in general since they use so much space. I know it's a baby, but just to go with the full adult size. But as a baby, I, I, I can't really tell what the dimensions are here, but I would think maybe a little bit bigger would be nice, but I'm sure there's plans to expand in the future. Anyway, let's look at the actual enclosure. I like kind of the different diverse stuff in there. There's a cuddle bone in there. There's different hides, which I assume are big enough for the size of the Russian tortoise. I like the couple different basking spots. There's UVB. I like the hay on the right side that's built up that can act as a nice moist hide with which Russian tortoises can still utilize even though they're an arid species. So overall, all the criteria is meant. I would like it a little bit bigger, but I can't complain really. And I think it's much better than probably a lot of Russian tortoise enclosures out there. So let's go with an eight and a half out of 10. All right, so let's see who's next up. And it is Baldy Locks, which we should all know is Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. He changes his name every other day on Discord. Not, not sure why, because you can tell it's him by that cheesy little yellow icon he has there that looks like it should be slapped on a promotional for a Mr. Clean bottle. But let's get ahead and go and look at his enclosure. Now, I'm not sure what is housed in this. He did not leave a note. By belief from watching his videos, this is a snake. So it probably wouldn't help me if I knew which species it was. I like the overly simplistic design of this enclosure, and that's not like a bad thing. I think snakes thrive in a more simplistic type design enclosure where it just has all the essentials. And that's what this pretty much has. It has a lot of brush in these plants. I can't tell if they're live or not. I don't think they are. And there's a water bowl for soaking. There's an upside down bowl for hide. I like how the substrate's pushed to the back. So it's a little bit deeper in the back there. And he has a hygrometer slash thermometer on the right side there. So I really like it. I think it's a really good enclosure for a snake. And despite his yellow icon picture there, I'm gonna give him a nine out of 10. I can't give him a 10 out of 10 because his head will get too big. So I'm gonna give him a nine. Next looks like we have one of my Discord mods, Cotton Candy Monster. By the way, if you want to join Discord, there will be a Discord link below in the description to join. And if you're watching the live chat version, you can go ahead and click the pin message up top and join the Discord where all these were submitted. But it looks like here we have a smaller Tegu enclosure. I believe that's on the right side right there. You can see a little goo basking a little bit. It looks like a Mega Ray, but I'm not sure. I'm not a I'm not thrilled with this being a glass enclosure. I don't like housing tegus in glass enclosures. I don't like housing Aki monitors in glass enclosures. They just, it never seems to work out for husbandry and for them and stuff like that. Otherwise, the inside I like. I think the inside's really good. There's a lot of dense brush for hiding. There's a nice little hide on the left there inside the brush. Basking spot looks like it should be adequate for the size tegu. I definitely do think when it gets bigger, or if it's already bigger, it should have a different enclosure, wider basking range with a couple bulbs and stuff like that. But I think for this right here, for the age, it's doable. Like I said, I wouldn't use a glass, but otherwise I like it. The leaf litter's nice. I think it needs a little bit more substrate. But I don't know if that goes beyond the enclosure into the drawers below, or if that's just that couple inches there. So I'm gonna give it seven out of 10. Next up, we have a really interesting one. This one's from Bic on Discord. There's a second enclosure we're gonna look at too from him. 
but I am really intrigued by what lives in this grow tent on its side. I don't really know what to make of it other than it's in a grow tent. I, I can't even tell if it's only for one species because it looks like there's a dark side on the left side and then a bigger side that's more light on the right side. So I don't know if this is for multiple species. I mean, it looks like you can travel between it, so I would think not. And I can't really tell where the basking spot is. I mean, I see some light on the left side and the dark side. Maybe that's the basking spot, but it's a little confusing. And there's no substrate, so um, I'm not, I don't know. It's really hard to rate this without knowing what the reptile is, but I, I'm hard. It's, it's hard for me to imagine what would be in here. So, otherwise, I mean, aesthetically, I think it looks very nice. There's plenty of climbing. wonder how he kind of rigged that all together, but it's, it's really just hard for me to judge. So, I'm going to go with... 7.5 out of 10, 8 out of 10 for just creativeness, but I can't really judge it in terms of how well it fits its certain species that it's housing. Let's look at the second enclosure from Bic real quick. I might not touch on a lot of second enclosures, but this one tricked me a little bit because it kind of looks like an aquarium. There's a blue kind of hue to it and it really kind of tricked me up, but overall it looks pretty decently designed. There's a lot going on there for environmental enrichment. Looks like there's a basking bowl, the hide and stuff like that. But again, it's hard to judge not knowing the species that's in here. So I like it. Looks like a DIY enclosure, but it really depends on the species. Aesthetically, though, probably like an 8 out of 10. Here we have, I believe, a rescue ball python enclosure. Let me scroll down. Yep. And it looks pretty good for a rescue situation that's a work in progress. It has all the essentials, which I think is all you can ask for when you're kind of setting up a new enclosure. This is probably temporary, I'm guessing, by work in progress. So we have a bowl for soaking, we have plenty of brush to hide in, and we have a nice hide there. I can't really tell how much substrate there is, although I'm not really sure how much a ball python really needs in terms of substrate. I'm also unsure of how well ball pythons do in glass enclosures. That can be another point of contention if, if it is, but that's, you know, ball python snakes, not my cup of tea. So overall, I think it hits all the essentials though for a ball python. I know they don't need a ton of space and they can do very well in simplistic enclosures. So I like it. I think this probably is like an eight and a half out of 10. Here we have a Russian tortoise enclosure from Chungus. This looks like it's two tortoise houses pushed together. I believe that's Zoomed brand. I've seen this many times. I, more apparently, I think, or more readily, you probably have seen it from Kenan. I believe he pushes two together. He has a setup for that for his baby red foots and stuff. But here we have a Russian tortoise setup. And if it's a baby, I think this does fine. I would like something a little bit bigger, though, if it's an adult. I think this is not big enough, but I'm not sure the dimensions, so I don't quote me on that. Overall, though, I think it fits. I wish there was a little bit more diversity in the substrate inside of it, though. But the, all the centrals are there. There's a bowl in there. I can't really tell if that... I'm assuming that's for water. I don't know where the food go, goes, if there's a bowl for that or something. UVB is in there. I'm assuming there's no problems with that going through. Little holes in the grate there. You basking and then two hides. So I think it hits all the essentials. Might be a little bit too small for an adult, though. Like I said, and I'd like to see a little bit more happening inside the enclosure in terms of decor. Oh, and let me rate it real quick. Let's go with an 8 out of 10. That, that's what we're going to go with. All right, next up we have our friend here, Alex's Agamids, with his Chinese water dragon enclosure that I believe he just got from Animal Plastics to A35. And I probably don't need to rate this, or I'm probably not even qualified since he is much more of a Chinese water dragon expert than I am and definitely knows his stuff. So I feel kind of weird giving him a rating. But, I mean, I can't complain. I like it. It's, I like the shelf there in the back. I'm assuming that was custom. I don't think that comes with the A35. Tell me if I'm wrong, Alex. But I like that because that fits well with the species in there. I don't know if the UVB could have just went horizontally across or if there's a reason they're diagonal. I believe it. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't know how to really say that. But... I've never seen really a setup where they're diagonal and not just going horizontally across, but I'm sure it's fine. Maybe so there's more of a concentrated UVB basking zone on that platform there. I like how he rigged together the different bark there. I forget what they're called, the cork rounds. I like how he did that. I, I wonder how sturdy they are because I can never get them that sturdy looking like that. And then I believe those are fake plants, but those are aesthetically pleasing. So I think overall, this looks really good. I can't see below it, but I'm going to assume everything's right because it's Alex here. And I got to give this one probably like a 10 out of 10. 
Here we have an enclosure from Elliot G15. This is another Russian tortoise enclosure. And I think this looks really good. I wonder what the dimensions here are, to be honest. We have a couple different views. I believe the left side looks a little dark, but it could just be kind of the aim of the camera. But I would like to see a little bit more overall brightness in the enclosure. They really respond well, any reptile responds well to a little to, to brightness to daylight so looks good overall though and it looks like this is a smaller tortoise you can kind of see him on the right side there and i think this works well i don't really have any complaints i think there's you know there's brush in the back left there which you know gives plenty of coverage there's a couple different hide options there's a ramp there. I'm a little, I, I see some people doing ramps and I'm a little iffy about that because I always worry about the tortoise flipping, but I don't know. Maybe I don't know something. So let me know, Elliot, if you're watching this, how you kind of view ramps and if there's ever been a problem with that. But I think overall, this is a nicely designed enclosure. I don't see water in there though. Where's the water bowl? That's the only thing I got to say. Rating wise, let's go with eight and a half out of 10. Next up, we got an Aki enclosure Achilles, the Aki monitor's home, it's custom made. I believe this is fully glass, I think. There's a couple different pictures we can look at, but it looks like the back is all glass, which I'm not too much of a fan of. I, I like to use as minimal glass as possible, just on the front. It just usually does best with minimal glass. I believe I just kind of previously talked about this. But overall, this is a really nice enclosure. Here's a full kind of setup here. You can see there's plenty of substrate on the bottom, which I really like. You definitely need it in an Aki enclosure. And there's so much diversity in the climbing that can be done. I really like this first picture, or these first two pictures really, where you can see the wood really piled up and almost just kind of tossed in there. And then you can see the retest stack on the left there for basking. I like it. I always have liked Aki setups where there's just a pile of cork rounds and stuff just thrown in there. And I'm sure there's a little bit of strategy and how this was set up, but that kind of look of it just being tossed in there, it's really nice because they will get in there and do a lot of exploring and hiding. And that works really well for Aki enclosure. So despite the back being glass and a lot of the front being glass a little too much, I'm still going to go with a 10 out of 10 for this enclosure because I think it's really nicely done and set up. Another Aki enclosure coming up here from Heads. I like this one a lot too. It does look a little bit small though. I don't know if it's a full adult, but this looks like one of the more 4x2x2 by two by two kind. Correct me if I'm wrong, Heads. But I, I would like a little bit bigger. That's a point of contention I always have, although there's quite a big portion of the hobbyists who keep them in 4x2s and such like that. But anyway, you got, that's old news to you guys. You guys heard me say that many times. I think this works fine. There's, it looks like a custom made one DIY, which is fine. I think the windows look fine. This is kind of what I mean in terms of mostly covered by wood and then just some glass in the front for sliding. Diversity in the basking spot with a couple bulbs there. Looks like there's a second basking spot there on the right, which works really nice. Looks like there's UVB. There's plenty of climbing there. Some slate rocks on the right side. I think this is a really nice enclosure. And my favorite picture here is this. I want to know if you can inform me, heads, just watching this, in a comment, how would you make this? Because I would love to make that. That looks really cool. And it seems to be a lot like the outcrops in Australia, which they reside. So I really like that. I really like your enrichment toy there. So those alone earned you a couple points. There's a slate rocks. And I believe that's all the pictures for the enclosure there. And then a plant in the back there. Let me know how that does sitting in there and if it ever gets knocked over. Overall, I, I really, you know, I wish it was a little bit bigger. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10 just because I wish it was a little bit bigger. How about we'll go with that. Another Russian tortoise setup here. I'm a little confused by it, to be honest. It says a custom cave sort of thing for them to dig in. I don't really see too much of a cave. I, uh, maybe that's in the back there underneath that log. That's kind of the cave setup. I'd really like to see more of what that looks like. Otherwise, it looks pretty plain. I don't see much other stuff. Now, I'm not saying that's not in that enclosure. It could just be a focus on this specific aspect of the enclosure. But I, I don't know if this is work in progress or something. Teasy, if that's how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. But is there more in this enclosure being set up? I'd like to see more environmental enrichment going on there. Different vertical spacing, some rocks, some brush. 
I don't see any bowls, I don't see any other hides or a basking spot, but you know, I don't want to put you on blast here because you could just be focusing on this one specific thing. I think there's just more details needing to be discussed here to, you know, get the full picture. But oh, it's night, so the lights off. Okay, so that that gives a little bit more context right there but i think for this i would like to still see a little bit more overall and like i said there could definitely be much more that i'm not seeing in this picture so i'm gonna go with like a six and a half out of ten next we have an enclosure from the reptiverse this is for a baby burmese python four by two by two melamine enclosure custom built Chi for heat and a girl light for day night cycle. Now, I don't know much about Burmese Python, so I'm just gonna go off of how much, how pretty it is. So I think it looks pretty good. There was that nice little rock hide on the left. I'm not really sure what that is. Is that like a Zoomed or Exoterra type brand, something like that? You see a bin for soaking. There's a couple different lights in there for basking and for UVB, I believe. And then there's a nice little plant, I, I believe fake kind of on its side there for a little bit of brush. I think this looks fine in terms of Burmese Python enclosures I usually typically see. Like I said, I don't know snakes, I don't know Burmese Python, so I can't really give too much details, but it looks fine. Like I said, for, you know, Adams previously, I think the simplistic designs for snakes usually do well. And I think this kind of is that good simplistic design. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 and kind of go off of that. I can't, I can't really go off of too much. So that's where we'll leave it rating wise. Here we have an enclosure from MAM Exotics, and it is a beaut. I don't know what is housed in here. I believe he or she did not leave that note anywhere, but it looks fantastic. This is definitely live plants here. There's plenty of brush. It just looks like a very good designed bioactive enclosure. I really like it aesthetically. So aesthetically, this is a 10 out of 10, but that can de definitely fluctuate based off of what species is living in here since it, I mean it looks like it's in an exoterra zoom ed type enclosure but you know it really depends on the species but in terms of aesthetics prettiness I mean there's water bowls there's substrate there's lighting up top I gotta give it a 10 out of 10 but I would love to know what's housed in these I love these type of setups and people who can really make the plants flourish and stuff really love it next we have toads beardy enclosure a custom background made of concrete four by two by two Biodu Terra Sahara, I believe that's sand? I believe that's the substrate, correct me if I'm wrong, and Giant Canyon Isopods in there. I really love this. The DIY background, first of all, I dream to be able to do something like this. And I would love some tips, Toad, on how you went about making this background because it, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's very aesthetically pleasing. I love how your beauty's kind of just there on the left side enjoying it. It almost looks like it should be in a museum or something like that, or in a zoo or something. Nice log going across. You got water in there, food, plenty of brush going on down at the bottom. I really think this beardy is a happy beardy and I would love to live in a setup like this if I was a beardy. Proper size, everything like that. So I would love to hear some tips from you Toad on how you went around that background and did that because I am completely lost on things like that. 10 out of 10 enclosure, easy. And finally, we have an enclosure from AJ Kurek. Please tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's a baby crested enclosure, crested gecko enclosure and it looks like it's a work in progress but it looks like it should meet all the criteria i have a pretty simplistic design right now for my crusty and that can be fine as long as they have brush to hide in because they really appreciate that and i think this does just enough to cover all those loose ends there there's a water bowl there is a food bowl there's some climbing there's some fake plants there and then some substrate definitely more can be done here but I don't think it's a bad setup I think it hits like I said everything it needs to hit and can just be further expanded on now I really and I'm doing this myself I'm not there just yet so I'm not trying to talk down or anything like that don't get me wrong but I really like bioactive live plant setups for crusties so it'd be cool if you went that direction AJ because that's the direction I am trying to head I've been really working on that over the last couple months even though I've had that enclosure for like several years now but I think this does the trick for now and don't beat yourself too up for thinking it's too simplistic. I think it's fine for the moment. So I'll give this probably like a seven and a half out of 10, but it does everything it really needs to do. And that's all the enclosure. I'm sorry if the lighting's weird in here and I got a weird reflection in my glasses, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I wasn't too harsh on anyone. I really tried to be 
objective and you know just try to give a good rating to what I believe and just give my good accurate feedback I also tried not to focus too long on it but that's my review what do you guys think about these enclosures which one was your favorite would you like to see me do a part two eventually when I get more enclosures sent to me on something like this let's get to a couple quick announcements before wrapping up I apologize guys I forgot the stickers for Patreon but I'm gonna shout you guys out still I want to shout out Kat and Rick Darian Jay Smooth Cat, Angela L, David T, Ellen M, Stephanie S, Toothy Chicken, Chris Cuts, and Hex. I really appreciate your support, guys. You guys, too. Oh, and Adam B. Adam B. I almost forgot it. I almost forgot it. Oh, and I also forgot Darren J's sticker in that last video. Don't think I didn't notice. Anyway, guys, if you want to go ahead and be a patron, make sure to check the top right corner. There's more information there. Tier 3 gets you on my forehead. If you've seen my past videos, you know what that looks like. Just different stickers on my head. And otherwise, I really appreciate you guys supporting the Patreon. Also, get $5 off your first purchase of Repti Links by using code ProfessorHerp at checkout. Repti Links is the primary diet for my Tegu Frappuccino. He loves it. It's nutritionally rich. You can also use it for hognose snakes and blue tongue skinks and other species. So definitely check them out. $5 off your first purchase by using code Professor Herp at checkout. There's a link directly below that applies it automatically. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. Let me know if you liked this style video. Let me know if you liked the idea. Let me know if you'd like to see another one eventually. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.